Hey guys, how's it going? This video will be covering the Net Plus exam experience. I'll be going over what I did to prep myself for this test and my overall score. So yeah, let's get right into it. Now, the test format for me, I had 80 total questions with 6 PBQs and 74 multiple choices. I spent most of my time on PBQs and they were surprisingly long and detailed. I messed up pretty hard on the PBQ because during my study period, I focused on anything and everything besides the commands because in my mind I was like I know some of these commands already so they're probably not that difficult and then came test day I forgot all the commands ended up just randomly guessing on one PBQ entirely learn from my mistakes please in this video you'll see what the PBQs look like you can skip to the chapter right now in fact and uh, come back to this beginning part later all right so when the test took place I actually was a little bit unsettled because usually this location provides paper and pencil and this time around they have no paper and no pencil so I was completely uh, taken aback. Before you go to your test center, you know, maybe contact them or just call them and ask, hey, are you guys providing a whiteboard or paper or some sort of material to write on? The weird part to me was in the middle of my test, a man walked in with a piece of paper and pencil, right? Nobody else in the center had that. I looked around, nobody on their table did. So again, this person either cheated or he asked and got an answer or permission. I'm gonna go over the uh, topics being covered in the test very loosely. In the comments below, I will probably add on more topics. For now, these are the ones that came to mind. Of course, you're gonna be facing a lot of commands, Linux commands, window commands, and uh, most importantly, network device commands. So that's like three categories of commands. There are some cross-platform ones, but uh, they are still, um, I, I put them together with like workstation commands like meaning you can access it from a computer. Network device commands are strictly for routers, switches, and uh, firewall. So you have two major categories of commands to go over. Make sure you do that. Troubleshooting methodology, they show up as always. The phrasing is just weird. It always is phrased really strangely. I always get them wrong, but um, moving on. We have protocols and numbers. That's uh, quite important too. I saw three to four questions focused on protocols and numbers. Sidar, CIDR, subnetting, also very important. Again, I didn't have a piece of paper to create my table with, so this was a struggle. Make sure you know the bare bone minimums, which is a slash eight, slash 16, slash 24, slash 32. That is the bottom row. The bottom row decimal value of uh, 255. Remember that, with a host, um, host range of one, I believe. Address block of one. What else we have? We had OSI questions, but they were pretty uh, sparse, like one or two questions here and there. 802.1q, 802.1x was mentioned. Now, uh, I'm gonna get to the study tips and resources. So the best way to approach studying is definitely going off of the objective list. Don't go too far away from the topics because there's always more to learn, right? After all, M plus is a beginner level networking certification. So if you try to Google something, they will just give you more and more detailed um, descriptions and you'll be left confused. So yeah, make sure you understand that you have to just know the definitions, not particularly how the thing works. If you really want to make sure you remember those things, write them down, group detailed notes into a section on your study guide titled under miscellaneous information. These will be information that's good to have in your back pocket, but again, it will not be on the test. The resources that I used was mainly Quizlet, Messar, Pearson's Exam Cram, which came with uh, online glossary and practice quiz. I think this one in particular is really worth it because the book is just like $30, right? $30 if you could find a discount um, it's like 16 and I believe all editions of the book doesn't matter if it's brand new refurbished used, whatever uh, on the back of it they will give you a link which you could like access online quizzes that's that's the main part I want you guys to um, understand which is uh, this exam cram is not just a physical book but it also has online resources for you to use along with it. So that's really, really good if you cannot afford the CompTIA material itself. I believe uh, they use uh, Willy.com or Cybex, S-Y-B-E-X as their platform for providing online resource. The quizzes, I remember seeing 600 plus questions, some of which are 008 materials, so be on the watch out for that. Now on the screen, uh, you probably are seeing what the uh, quiz look like. Uh, hopefully I remember to edit that part in. Make your own shishi helps a lot. If you really want to make sure you pass, you can get the CompTIA Cert Master Learn bundle, which includes the ebook, videos, and lessons based on each module. I personally find Cert Master Learn to be a better deal than just Cert Master Practice, since it's much more detailed and broken down. 
Not to mention the searchable ebook, which is very handy for finding terms that you can't seem to find anywhere else online. Certmaster Practice is like buying a sheet of practice questions with a final test readiness assessment. The explanation provided by Certmaster Practice is often questionable. I also noticed that it tends to ask questions outside of the test objectives. Rarely do these questions appear on the test. So their padding is uh, what I'm trying to get at for Certmaster Practice. They're padding the, out the material. I basically did this course entirely free. In the description below, you'll basically find all my uh, materials. There is a caveat to this thing where uh, a day before my test, I got my 009 materials, which I just basically flipped through it really freaking quickly. My program was supposed to deliver that to me like a month ago, but it wasn't there. So yeah. Test taking tips. Manage your time by skipping PPQs. This is a major one. Most people recommend you doing that, and I agree with it. Make sure you enter the question that you want to flag before moving on. Uh, the Network Plus test itself feels really straightforward, uh, which is refreshing. All the multiple choices basically boils down to two possibly correct answers. My test always included two very incorrect choices, so um, it seems simple enough. By sticking to the objective, you should know all the necessary vocabulary for the test. On the test, you will have questions that you can't possibly answer. Those are made to catch cheaters, so fortunately or unfortunately, those questions don't account for points. Stay focused and push through the questions, and you're most likely good to go. Here's my metric for making sure that you could pass. Um, I make this mental note of keeping my flag questions within 10 to 12 questions at most and be able to do half of my PBQs. Now this could be a percentage. It doesn't have to be actually three PBQs that you, you know, got 100% on. So you can have 60% on PBQ1, a 50% on PBQ2, a 90% on PBQ3. As long as this mental percentage adds up to three PBQs, you should be fine. Okay, hopefully you guys can see this PBQ better than I can. Uh, the first PBQ is basically a logical diagram full of devices and we have to use commands to find which is the faulty device. It could be a IP or MAC address issue. It could also be um, one of the workstations just you know being faulty. It could also be a default gateway issue. The second PBQ is focused on um, understanding where to place network devices you'll see uh, boxes with question mark on it and you have to drag and drop network devices into it. You have to know the purpose that these uh, network devices serve on top of being able to configure some of them, such as like wireless access point. Uh, you have to configure something on it. Devices can include firewall, switches, router, AP as we mentioned, range extenders. You have to network uh, these devices between two different buildings, logically of course. The third PBQ, it's a little bit more extensive you have this uh, map showing all the different subnets and you have like three routers in the middle. You have some switches connecting to the routers. You have to be able to use commands and see why a user on subnet C, for example, cannot reach a device on subnet A. You have to be able to understand the information you see in the command line interface. IP address, subnet IP, you have to know all this stuff. For PBQ4, you'll be looking at a two-part question. Um, it might be daunting at first, but it's actually quite simple. The one I got, we have like around four questions. You have all these little diagrams that you want to click on and expand because like for some reason they have hidden information in them. The instruction did tell you to click on it, but I'm just saying from a glance, you can't tell. So within this uh, PBQ, you'll see traffic data. Um, make sure to expand diagrams so you can see additional information such as like uh, VLANs and also um, packets, traffic, flow, and packet size. Pretty straightforward. PBQ5 is probably one of the more confusing ones, uh, just visually confusing. It's actually pretty straightforward as well. You'll have like three or four or five switches and you have to click on the ports and configure these ports. Uh, in the bottom left hand side you'll be provided with a legend. The legend is mainly just to show you what port is active and what port is disabled and what VLAN number matches to what type of service it's providing. When you click on the port, you'll have this menu that pop up showing you uh, if VLAN is enabled, if uh, link, uh, link aggregation control protocol is active or not. You have to look at the speed and transfer and then at the bottom you'll have to add a VLAN with the specific number. You'll have devices attached to the port itself. Could be a server, could be a printer, could be a wireless access point, could be a phone, and then a workstation attached to the phone. So a lot of things, a lot of things here. The key terms here is just LACP, Link Aggregation Control Protocol, and VLAN tagging. You have to make sure you understand those two. For PPQ6, this one, 
I think this one boils down to being able to use your commands and again find the faulty piece of the device. Try all the commands, that's my biggest tip. Try spam all the commands that you remember on the test day. Put it with a syntax, put it without syntax, just try your damnest. I know nervousness gets to all of us and for me in particular, I completely forgot all of it. I just uh, smashed my commands and some of them went through. Oh, uh, just a heads up for that particular PBQ. Some of the devices accept commands that's rejected by other devices in the same problem. Like, let's say I put ping for one device and the other device will not accept ping. It will accept netstat instead. If I try to click on a different device and I put netstat, it will not accept that, but it will accept ping, um, if that makes sense. After you're done with the test, you will be greeted with a CompTIA test survey. It's really annoying and stupid since you will not be able to see your grade until you submitted the survey. So you will be filled with suspense and dread. So keep that in mind. When you're done with that, the next step is to put the cert on your personal website. Could be a professional networking site or you can just post it on social media. You know, let people know that you passed. If you fail to pass the test, remember this mantra. These tests are made by boomers that are out of fucking touch with modern technology and it seems like they have never taken a single English class in their life. So if you've seen any of their own test materials and practice problems, you'll realize how disjointed everything is. It's like their question making team is in a different department from their explanation team. CompTIA is also infamous for their just shit ass phrasing, let's say it like that. So don't be harsh on yourself, just know that you failed at a rigged game and you did not fail at being successful. Now, the main takeaway from this video is um, I want you guys to pass and uh, I want to provide as many free resources as possible. And hopefully these uh, detailed example PBQs will uh, push your grade towards a higher level uh, compared to my lowly 742, you know? The passing grade is 720. Feel free to leave a comment and ask me questions regarding the tests. Um, this is a long and stinky journey. I got my A plus and my net plus. I think I'm ready to go from here. Um, in the future, I will try to take the CCNA tests and maybe security plus. Who knows? One more thing before I go, uh, if you want to know more about M plus before taking it, definitely go visit the r slash CompTIA subreddit for posts that go above and beyond to help test takers better prepare themselves for the exam. It's a positive and small community found on Reddit.